Hello and welcome back to this week's Q&A. Today I'm going to be talking about why it can be so hard to break a habit and how to change that. The first thing I'll begin by saying is that your brain has a limited capacity for daily energy expenditure. Let's look at it from a mental currency perspective. You have a limited amount of cognitive energy on a daily basis before you have reached a limit and you need to go to bed. You're tired, you start making bad decisions, you start making mistakes, you start stuttering. I don't know about you guys, but I start stuttering. I lose my train of thought. And that is because you have given a lot of your mental currency throughout the day. So when we are trying to adopt a new habit, we are essentially asking the brain to use more energy on this new thing or breaking this old habit that we can't seem to shake. It requires a lot of energy. It requires a lot of attention and intention. Have you ever said on a Monday, you're going to change something and by Friday you have forgotten? That is because your brain is designed to maximize energy efficiency it doesn't really know the difference between right and wrong. It knows what has been repeated. And if a pathway has been repeated and it has been ingrained, regardless of whether it is serving you or not, it's going to go down the route that is more traveled. So you end up operating on automaticity, meaning that you operate without thinking on an automatic autopilot right? You don't think about the way that you make your coffee. You don't think about the way you drive to work every single day. You just do it. It's that classic feeling of getting to work and you go, how did I get here? <laughs> that is because you've made that route so many times that you know how to get there. So you are paying attention. It's just that you are thinking about other things because your automatic processing knows how to get you there. Okay. That is the same for these bad habits. And it is the same for trying to break them your brain is going to revert to the path that it knows best, regardless of whether it is good or bad for you. The brain doesn't know the difference between right and wrong. It just knows what's been repeated. Okay, so that is tip number one. Have a little bit of compassion for yourself. Understanding how the brain works can help you improve the way that you see yourself and the way that you can change your habits. Tip number two to breaking these habits is that the brain operates on consistency, repetition. When one neuron, I'm saying one neuron, it's more than one neuron, but for simplicity, stay with me, I'm gonna say as if it's a one neuron. When one neuron communicates with another neuron, these two neurons get very good at communicating with one another. So good that the receiving neuron that receives the information from the previous neuron inserts more receptors into its membrane, cell membrane, so that it can receive more neurotransmitters and therefore these two neurons bind to one another. And it does that through repetition. So tip number two is if we can use this bad habit to our advantage. So what that could look like is I want you to pick a good habit that you've been trying to get into, something simple, something easy. Maybe you have been forgetting to drink water and you'd like to drink more water. Or you wanna get into the habit of performing the physiological sigh. The physiological sigh is one of the best tools to help you regulate from your stress. So what you could do, and every time you perform that bad habit, Maybe you pick your lips, maybe you pick your nails, maybe you smoke and you wanna break it. What you can do is you can add the positive habit to the end of that sequence of events because what will end up happening is that that bad habit will turn into a positive habit and you will end up saying, okay, when the cue triggers me to want to smoke, to want to pick my lips, to want to do whatever, I know that at the end of that, there's that positive thing that Nicole told me to implement. And what will happen eventually is that you'll be able to fast forward, fast track to that positive habit and break that bad habit. It will serve as a reminder to think twice about whether you actually want to perform that bad habit at all. Because sometimes we're just clutching at relief. Maybe you're a little bit stressed, that's why you smoke. So your automatic processing says, Go and smoke that cigarette because you're super stressed right now. But if you know that the physiological sign gives you relief as well, you'll be able to say, hey, I know that this cue triggers me to smoke, 
but I know that after smoking comes a physiological sigh. The physiological sigh also makes me feel really good. I'm just not in the habit of doing it. Now you fast track and you do the physiological sigh instead. Now tip number three is when you enact the bad habit, it is very important that we don't beat ourselves up about it. We beat ourselves up about it because we're trying to gain control of the situation. So subconsciously you're saying, it doesn't matter if I smoke that cigarette because I know that I can beat myself up about it later and that's my form of gaining control of my behavior. But that keeps us stuck. How many times have you berated yourself about a bad habit and how many times has it ever worked? How many times have you stopped every time you made yourself feel bad about it? Humans learn better on positive reinforcement. So when we say to ourselves, hey, I only smoked one cigarette today. Yeah, I still smoked, but I only smoked one where I normally smoke five. Congratulate yourself. Every time you congratulate yourself, your brain releases dopamine. It's a reward-based learning mechanism that tells you what you did to feel good. And that makes us feel good. So instead of focusing on the negative, which is the fact that you still smoke, focus on the positive, which is that you smoked four less. Every small win, congratulate it. Every small win, celebrate it. Because eventually it will change your behavior into the one that you want. We don't learn from shaming ourselves. It does work in some certain scenarios to some degree, but when it comes to breaking bad habits, particularly the addictive ones, it doesn't work. Guys, I hope this was helpful. Please drop your questions in the comment section. I wanna hear from you. I wanna know if this helped and I can't wait to hear from you. If you haven't liked, commented or subscribed, please do so now. It's me, Nick, your host, and I am your pocket neuroscientist.